With the Federal Reserve interest rate decision just around the corner, is Bitcoin going to be able to muster the strength to continue upwards or is it doomed to correct? Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, maybe our team, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having an absolutely awesome weekend. We're here to take a look at Bitcoin today, discussing the price action on a higher time frame, small time frame, and medium term time frame, discussing the current horizontal range, the next immediate move, the interest rate hikes, and what impact those hikes could potentially have on the future price action for assets and Bitcoin. Before you get into it, smash the like button, hit the call button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, data, technical and structural information, economic news, and relevant news events. No BS, no hype, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the second link down below. You're going to go ahead and get access to charts, updates, educational posts, news events, information, and everything you need to stay on top of the markets, Bitcoin, altcoins, cryptocurrency, and of course, the relevant economic news. If you're interested in joining our VIP channel, as you can see, we post trading signals with justification, analysis, exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses. We only trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, and high cap alts. No shit coins, no pumping and dumping, no low market cap coins. As you can see, our trades are very, very successful. You can find our entire trading track record in the free channel. Go to the pinned comment, click the links. So you can find our entire trading track record over 30 months of data a 79.28% win rate. Including access to that group, you'll get access to our trading charter education group. Look, we're in here trading, showing you guys some trades, learning, developing our skills, and so much more to become better traders. If you're interested in, go ahead and contact me. Let's go ahead, guys, without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting off with the market data, of course, we can see volume for the 24 hour period has taken a little bit of a slump. And that is kind of expected as the weekend volume is pretty pretty measly, right? We don't really see a lot of weekend volume. We're down 13%, sitting at 41 billion. As for the 24-hour liquidations, we can see it is sitting at 46 million with a 25% surge in the last 24 hours. Now that surge is mainly due to the fact that Bitcoin has once again taken another crack at breaking down from that 29.8k support level. Every single time we drop below this level, we see liquidations increase as we have a huge, huge liquidity level that has been pushed lower and lower and lower into the 29.7 to 29.6k range now. So we have seen another crack down, another quick liquidation grab on the bottom side resulting in liquidations in uh, overall increasing. Looking at the DXY, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit to the daily chart and discuss what is happening on the price action. We'll come back to those charts later in today's video. So we have now seen a pretty steady move toward the upside. Again, we don't expect too much. And I want to go ahead and show you the key levels over here. The key levels for the DXY and the next main moves are going to be the upper resistance of our resistance range and the lower support of our support range. This is going to be our bullish trigger. This is going to be our bearish trigger. This level here is a support. This level here is a resistance. At the moment, we have seen a bounce from our lower support as expected. We expected a move into this range, which has occurred. We do not expect a positive reaction on the DXY that will influence the markets, meaning the markets will crash, okay, or drop down, unless the DXY is able to break above the bullish trigger. If we break above this level, we are likely to see a bit of pain and a bit of red in the markets. Now, alternatively, if the DXY crashes and loses its lower support, that is going to be a very long standing support we will lose and the markets will continue toward the upside. The result of what the DXY will do is heavily determined on interest rates. And we know that the next interest rate hike is in three days, 14 hours, 59 minutes. By the time you're watching this, probably around three hours, uh, three days and 13 hours. As you can see, the probabilities for a rate hike, 0.25, is 99.2%. A no change or a pause is 0.8 and a ease is 0%. We're going to be discussing in great depth today exactly what this means for the future price action and explaining with a great analogy how you can understand how the interest rates can directly impact the overall market risk and future market risk uh, for 
asset prices, and that will determine where the assets eventually do end up going. So we're going to talk about that later in today's video, but let's go ahead and get into the stock market. The stock market is at our resistance again, deviation above so far, not expecting too much. We do expect it to be deviation and a correction to occur from here. Again, if we can close out this week green, if we can get the DXY down and we can get the interest rate hike to be a pause, or again, we'll talk about another instance later on, we can expect S&P 500 to continue upwards, but until then, it is not looking very healthy over here. Looking at the Dow Jones, a very similar position, we have broken above some of these trigger levels, which is really, really nice to see, but we do have a lot of levels of liquidity in this range. You can see another level of resistance right over here that we do need a challenge to regain. The direction of the price action right now is upward. The direction of the price action has been upward for many, many months, ever since we created these bottoms down in October, and that has been the case. These uptrending support levels are the key levels to be watching. If we lose these levels, that is when a proper trend reversal will occur, but we could see pullbacks from these levels of liquidity, watching the DXY, watching the stock market, watching the economy for indications of direction. Let's go ahead guys and jump into Bitcoin next. So I, I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our Mega World promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that, guys, BitGet is a non KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. Really a quick summary of what has happened for Bitcoin. And then we're gonna discuss in great detail what is actually occurring. Bitcoin has been consolidating for now coming close to about 30 days in a horizontal consolidation range. The later part of the consolidation range, we have been in this lower area of support. If you take a look at the price action, we respected these levels very, very well for the last 25 or so days. We had deviation above, we came down, we broke below, we had a nice strong breakdown. Upon that breakdown, we had indication that the ETFs had been filed on the registry and that resulted in a strong move toward the upside. We did not break above the POC level, which is the point of control, a massive error resistance. In fact, we rejected from the POC and we have down, we have been going down ever since. Currently, the key levels on this chart still remain intact. The key levels we are watching are going to be our lower and upper trigger levels for both our resistances and our supports. At the moment, this level over here, this gray, this yellow box represented by our black trend lines, okay? This level between 30,000 and 29.8k is now officially a resistance. This level is a resistance level on the chart and a level that needs to be reclaimed for the price to push upwards. Number two, in our range, we have a mid-range resistance sitting at our POC. For the price to push upwards, we need to clear our POC and local high points at 30,400. Breaking over this level will send the price into a uptrend again toward our next resistance. The next resistance being 31,000 to 31,300. Looking higher from there, above 31,300, we have a major high time frame resistance. Okay, this is our macro resistance, uh, which is going to span up to 32,000. If we go to our daily chart, we can see that macro resistance is sitting right over here, represented by this upper uh, red box. You can see a red box over here. I'll go ahead and circle it. This is our macro high time frame resistance. If we look at our VIPV, the moment we jump above this level, we can see the VIPV significantly drops off and starts to build back up again around 38 to 40k, indicating this is our next major resistance above our major support. Okay, so for the price to continue upwards and turn macro bullish, we need to see the price break above 32,000. This stuff is very simple. 
We've been talking about this stuff a lot, but we're going to go over it again today. Moving down from here, we can see we have the short-term bearish trend. Below our 29.8k level, we are short-term bearish. We are currently retesting this range of resistance. We have to assume we are short-term bearish while we remain below 30,000 and more importantly, below 30,400 to 30,250. Until then, we can see we have gaps in the VIPV, the main gap being the liquidity level between 29.8 and 29,000. Below that being the level of support at 28.4 to 28.2. Those are our key levels, guys, to go ahead and identify them. Those are the levels we are watching. So, what is the price action doing and how can next week's price action determine where Bitcoin is going to go for quite some time? So, first and foremost, let's talk about the interest rate hikes. The interest rate hikes are going to be absolutely massive in determining where Bitcoin will go. And we'll talk about this in two ways. We're going to show you on the charts. I'm going to show you based on a specific chart we have on our DXY, which is above, which is going to be the relationship between interest rates, inflation, and the perceived systematic risk. So, first and foremost, to determine where price is going to go on a macro and short term scale, we have to identify that news events, particularly high impact news, has two impacts on price action. Impact number one is the initial news release. The initial news release or the reaction to the news release is impact two, uh, impact one. And impact two is the shift in perceived systematic risk the news event causes in the market. So, the prices have been coming down. We're most likely trying to price in the potential interest rate hike of 0.25%. And therefore, the initial news event, the release of that news is unlikely to have a significant impact on the price action. We might see a little correction. We might even see a little rally because that isn't going to impact the price. What is going to impact the price is the perceived systematic risk and how this will change. So if the Federal Reserve announced on the Federal Reserve rate hike meeting that after they've lifted 25 base point, they say we expect future rate hikes, that is when the perceived systematic risk or trajectory of interest rates increase and increase the overall risk in the market, which results in asset prices falling. If they say, yes, we've done a 25 basis point hike, but we do not anticipate on doing any more hikes, then the interest rate hike we have seen will not affect the overall perceived systematic risk trajectory towards the upside. In fact, it will drop it downwards. It will be, it will be perceived as bullish and asset prices will rise. I did a really good analogy in the group chat. We'll tell you right over here. Imagine you are on a boat, okay? A boat full of treasure in the ocean and a big wave is coming. The big wave is the interest rate hike. You've got two options. Number one, you can drop off some gold to lighten your weight so you're more likely to make it through a wave. Or number two, you can hold on to all your treasure and gold and hope that the impact doesn't destroy the ship. You anticipate slight damage. So the initial reaction is not really that important. What is important is the context. Now, adding this information, if you know after the initial wave there is going to be 10 more waves, then your decision is going to be very different to in comparison to if you know after this wave, there is going to be no more waves. So you can see how now the context of which the interest rates have been hiked in plays a massive role in the reaction of the market. The boat is the market and your decisions are whether or not to hold on or to unload or to off offset your risk. Then the context of that environment is going to determine how likely you are to do certain things. So in this instance, if we get an interest rate hike and we know there are going to be future interest rate hikes, there is much, much higher chance that the markets are going to correct as investors offload their risk. If the interest rate hike does occur and they indicate we are not going to see another interest rate hike, it is very likely that this interest rate hike will be ignored and the markets will continue upwards as they expect the future trajectory of systematic risk and therefore market risk to continue toward the downside as it has been for the last four months. So if we take a look at Bitcoin, the 26th is going to be when we have the interest rate hike. On Australian time, it is actually the 27th at around 4 a.m., which is around this red line. We don't expect anything significant to occur until this red line is reached. This is going to be a massive, massive event that is going to determine where the price action goes. Okay, so if we see a significant move that occurs, we're not really looking for anything until this red line reached because this red line has a chance or this news event has a chance to completely sway the market in either direction. Let's go ahead and take a look at the technicals. So breaking it down to the daily chart to start off with, and then we'll go down to a smaller time frame. 
As we can see in the daily chart, we have really struggled to remain above that $30,000 level for the last few days. We're kind of tampering underneath it. We're holding just underneath resistance. We can see that the momentum is on an overall downturn, but it is starting to plateau out. Again, for us to flip bullish again, we need to see a positive momentum flip. Flip. This is our bearish divergence represented by this chart over here. Okay, we have decreasing momentum. We have rising price action. We have a very clear bearish divergence. We are going to need to see the RSI break above this level and invalidate that bearish divergence, resulting in a positive momentum flip for the prices to continue upwards and have the chance at breaking through our short term and macro resistance at 31.3 to 32,000, which will result in a macro trend continuation upwards. On the downside, guys, if we fail to do so, we will be heading toward the downside. Looking at our CVD, not really much is being shown here. We have pretty pretty tight consolidation on the CVD. Not much is being shown. Open interest is steadily falling toward the downside. Again, if we have downward open interest and downward price action, this does represent a strong downtrend, which we are currently in, but it doesn't indicate where the price will be going. We do have to look at these levels of support. Moving on to our higher time frame, if we do happen to break down, the uptrend is still very much intact, provided we hold this uptrending support level. If we fail to hold above this uptrending support level, that is when the trend will enter a downtrend. Until then, we are in a overall uptrend. So any correction that occurs, that results in the price remaining above this uptrending solid line is technically still bullish. However, if we do retest this solid line, we do have a potential to create a head and shoulder pattern over here, which as you would know, is a bearish pattern. If we do retest that uptrending dollar line, we will have also lost the uptrending or the upper level of the Gaussian channel on the weekly chart. The upper band of the Gaussian channel on the weekly chart is sitting at 28.4K, which happens to be this same level of support represented on the smaller time frame and level of liquidity over here. So a loss of 28.4K will send the trend into a daily bearish trend. And if we're on a daily bearish trend, we have the bearish momentum and strength to potentially break below this uptrending support level. An incredibly important time in the markets to pay attention as a lot is going to go down this week and we are definitely keeping our eyes peeled. Watching the interest rate hike, watch what they do, watch what they say, very important. Look at the markets, watch to see how they react. If they continue upwards, but do not break below these, or break above, should I say, these key, key levels, we'll zoom in, these key levels of resistance, the main ones being, we're looking at 31.3 and 32,000, it doesn't matter. These are the next resistances. For the price to continue upwards, 32,000 has to be broken above. We need to reclaim and break above this high resistance level to continue upwards. Until then, resistance is resistance until it's not, and we're likely to correct. As we said over here, we are likely to correct. We have now seen that correction. Two things, guys. Number one, watch interest rate hikes. Watch to see what occurs. Watch to see what they say. Number two, watch the key triggers on the price action chart. Identify the trend. The trend is positive. We are in an uptrend until we are not. Number two, identify where the continuations occur. We know that the next level on the macro chart that will result in a continuation is 32,000. Therefore, a break above 32,000 should be considered bullish. If we are at 32,000, but we are challenged as resistance, meaning we have weakening metrics, falling momentum, falling volume, falling open interest, all this kind of stuff is representing weakness at resistance and therefore a high probability of failure. I'm going to leave it there, guys. I don't think there's much more to say. I hope you enjoyed today's video. There was a lot going on. It was a little more choppy and clustered than usual. But it's, again, the price action hasn't really done much. But behind the scenes, a lot is going on with the price action. So keep that in mind. Pay attention to the next week because this week is going to be a very important week. An incredibly important week for the markets. We are at a macro resistance. The S&P 500 is at a macro resistance. The Dow Jones is breaking out of a macro resistance. The DXY has retested a long-standing, one-year-long resistance level. If we go back to the DXY chart, we can see 
the level we are retesting now is an incredibly long standing one year long resistance. You can see right over here, this is 400 plus days of resistance. We are challenging. If we reject from here, the markets are going to be very bullish. This is a very, very deciding moment. The markets are going to continue up into a macro uptrend or they're going to see a pretty nasty rejection. Thanks for watching, guys. Pay attention. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.